Hey guys, do I have a game for you? Played this game actually about two or three days ago. I just re reviewed it to make sure that I was a little bit fresh on what happened. But this definitely, I count among the best games I have ever played. Possibly the best, actually, at least in the last few months. So I'm using Azami, just as a little bit of a mix-up of things. And he's using one of the new commanders, Daxos of Miletus who is pretty awesome, actually. I've been very impressed by it. A bunch of games I've played against it. It may have something to do with the fact that I don't tend to play decks that are heavy on creatures. And in this case, I'm actually pretty happy I'm using Nin, uh, sorry, a zombie versus a deck like Nin, which has almost no creatures, although they all are two power, except for Flame Tongue Kabu. But anyway, he's going first. And unlike most games I've played that I record, my opponent going first does not have a Sol Ring. He has a Cathedral of War after mulliganing. So I read this as like a sure, a, a sure sign of being mana light. And we're just going to attack his land. No question at all, especially with Halimar Depths and the ability to fish for more land. So he casts Portent on himself to go look for more land. This guy's deck's pretty odd, actually. It's very much designed to manipulate the top of his deck and his opponent's deck to abuse his commander. But he's got plenty of good cards in here, too, which is what makes this game so cool. So I'm using Halimar Depths. I see Rainforest, Venser, and Karn. And right now, given the, uh, the current situation of things, I'm just going to get the land. Because I don't really see a use for Venser, and certainly not for Karn for quite a while. I really need to just deal with his dude. And so he attacks my lands. So now Karn and Venser are really, really useless. I'm very glad I ordered them in that way because I need to just go and look for more land. So he puts that thing out. I'm just going to go and destroy his land back since I've still got the magical three to get to Coalition Relic. I'm really hoping to just mana screw him here and force a concession, which often happens when this many lands go to the graveyard early. So he's casting Predict on me. He did not name Karn. It's funny how Karn was still on top anyway. Even though I just reshuffled, it's that weird reshuffling bug. I'm sure you guys have observed that before, where you reshuffle your deck and the card you just reshuffled is still right on top. So, Cavern of Souls. Not that I could counter it anyway, but it could complicate things down the road. And there's Daxos. So as much as I'm tempted by the play of just running Snapcaster Mage out to block that thing... Um, I need to develop my mana here. And I figure that I can just treachery it next turn if he does, in fact, hit something good and uh, uses his mana to cast it. But I have plenty of reactive spells and stuff that Daxos can just mill to no effect. This is weird. He casts Lantern of Insight before he attacks, which I cannot understand, given that uh, you at least need to know what your opponent has on top. Like, what if he got a four mana thing here? Like Thran Dynamo or something, and now he can't cast it. He eats the Forbid. It's going to be a lot of libraries shuffling around here. I've got Bribery on top now. That's top of his library. That's the top of mine. This is a horrible card. I'm not really sure why you'd use it. <laughs> Field of Dreams, really. It's good with reshuffle effects. You can see if you're going to draw something bad. So I'm charged at the end of the turn. There's Bribery. The Bauble on top. So the fact that I've got a Bauble here and... Uh, that gives me confidence that I can... Oh, that's right, I want to play my um, Glenelindra Archmage first because I want to protect uh, Future Sight and Treachery and stuff. So he memory lapses the Glenelindra Archmage, which combos very well with Daxos, which changes the game plan dramatically. Did I not play land there? No, I did. Okay, I did play land. So he plays temple and attacks me and obviously I don't do not want him to get Glenelinda Archmage on top so this is a desperation play here I just run out the Snapcaster Mage praying that he doesn't have another counter he doesn't have any instant removal or anything and sure enough it works Whew. disaster averted that would have been the game almost right there if he had gotten that guy off the top of my deck so he casts opportunity on himself and that reveals him drawing I guess he drew the, uh, whatever the hell was on top there, plus Ponder, Top, and Colonnade. I 
bad. And he's got Fire Shrieker on top. It's kind of neat. The, comp the equipment does really work pretty well with Daxos because your opponent has so few blocking options. If you have a way of buffing up your guy, you can make him into a pretty uncomfortable situation here. So I cast Future Sight. And I know that I've got that bobble on top still, which is why I did this. Play an island, cast that. Void Mage Prodigy. So I'm not feeling too bad here. He does have a lot more cards in hand than me, but I do have the Treachery and uh, Bribery also for his big guys. And I've got Future Sight running. Unfortunately, ugh, he has Austere Command to just totally crush me. Three for one right there. And top. That's all right. Draw Temporal Adept. This is one change I made to this deck very recently. I'm trying this guy out. I haven't been too impressed with it so far. It seems my opponent always gets it on turn three against me. Um, but I replaced the Wizard Cycling guy with it. I just feel like it's got a little bit more potential. It's certainly better to draw it first. So I'm just going to play a zombie rather than casting Glenelendra. I don't see Glenelendra helping too much right now, given that i got to deal with his commander. And i got an opening to cast my guy. So he taps six mana to make a three mana to make a three and dynamo. And down comes Daxos again. That's all right. We've got him covered. I'm going to draw a card here. And steal Daxos. Thank you very much. So I feel very, very secure after that play right there. I mean, granted, he still has four cards in hand, but I've got, I just stole his dude. I've got Glenelendra Archmage now running. There's another two counters in hand. Feeling very, very solid here. And then he does that. Oh, strip mine. Really complicating things. Now my mana deficit looks really terrible right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 11 mana to 4. So he puts cast totally lost to put his, his own guy back on top of his deck. And he recasts Daxos. So he drew a land there. That's okay, because Glenelendra Archmage can block it. So we're not really too concerned yet. And I've got two counter spells. And he's only got three cards in hand. So he cast this, obviously. I have to counter that because a double striking guy is a nightmare. So I'm just going to counter with the spell. And I, unfortunately, I can't use Glenelander Archmage here when he casts these non-creature spells because I need two power to block and kill it. He casts this stupid thing, which I also have to counter. Because what are the odds that he's got something worse than those two cards. Well, there you go. Sword of Fire and Ice. And there's no no Force of Will on top of my deck. No Pact of Negation. So suddenly this very, very secure board position some looks very, very precarious. What did he oh he got shackles too. That's right, I was thinking to myself, well, I can still handle it. I've got shackles in my deck. And what does he mill right off the top? He gets shackles. Because he has no cards in hand, so I could just play a land and fabricate and use Glenelander Archmage to protect uh, his counter magic and next turn uh, well, actually I would just yeah I would just go fabricate shackles probably just cast it right away given that he can't counter spell but yeah ugly ugly position okay so this is a really really interesting turn I've got a lot of choices here I really want to develop my mana and there's a lot of ways to do that I thought about casting Sapphire Medallion casting Trinket Mage getting a probably a mana crypt, casting mana crypt for Sapphire Medallion, absorbing one hit of this little bastard, and then next turn I've got the ability to, well, I, I draw extra cards also off of my wizards, and then I get to untap and bribery and do other stuff, but I decide to just bribery him because figuring, you know, he's playing blue-white, he most certainly has, um, he's got big white creatures in his deck, right, that I could just block, no problem. Oh, I didn't even get to show you. Anyway, I briberied him. Zero creatures in his deck. None. And when I did that, I just looked at the board state and said, Oh my god, I just lost the game. <laughs> he smiles at me. <laughs> so now it's time to get owned. Sword of Fire and Ice. God, so many of my decks just get crushed by this guy. He kills a zombie. 
actually, what did he exile there? Oh, he got Seagate Oracle. So he just gets a free guy. Gets to look at two free cards. He destroys my land. Oh, he's suddenly looking really, really horrible. I draw a useless patron wizard. So now, unfortunately, I've got to go do the play that I should have done the turn before, which was just develop my mana. He's got a brainstorm response. We're going to get a crypt. And he's got disempower on my soaring <laughs> card combo. It's pretty well with uh, Daxos. So yeah, we're just going to be assuming the position here. Smash. I take four. Kills my Glenland Archmage and draws my Soul Ring. Suspends Ancestral Vision, which I'm actually quite happy to see. But yeah, suddenly there's like a lot of liabilities lining up here. Not only do I have to solve the Sword, but I have to solve my own Crypt before it gets too late, and I have to solve the Culminate as well. And right now I have no answers to any of them. Magus. There's one maxim that holds true in magic. If you don't have answers, card drawing can sometimes solve them. I'm just going to go and dig, dig, dig. So I'm just casting the Temporal Adept to not only draw a card, but also to uh, give him more options to shoot with his sword. I really want him to just blow this up. I'm hoping that he does that and leaves my uh, zombie unmolested. So yeah, he time ebbs the Azami though, which isn't too bad because it's cheaper to recast it. I think time ebbing this guy and attacking and blowing up the um, Azami makes much more sense though, given how much mana it costs me to recast her if he kills her. So I take a huge hit here, dropping to 13. He does blow up the Adept. But I'm really, really happy that he uh, put Azami on top of my deck instead of uh, the Adept. It would be a very different game. Flip for the crypt. Survive it. Planet Island. We have Brainstorm there. I saw just some of these guys right here. Oh. I guess the zombie did cost a fortune. That's weird. Didn't he just time add this? I'm targeting a zombie. Weird. Why didn't he cast a zombie? He could have cast it, actually, off of his... Daxus. Oh, that's what happened. I see. Okay. So if you read this, exile the top card of that player's library. That's what happened. Okay. So he attacked and put a zombie on my deck and then exiled it. And I had the option of either removing it from the game or letting him play it. And, of course, I opted to remove it from the game. So that's why. Okay, now it makes sense. Anyway, I'm still in horrible shape here, even though I have so many cards in my hand. And for some reason, he doesn't send in Colonnade here to take me down to seven. I get to draw some more cards, and I finally draw something that represents at least part of a solution, Cyclonic Rift. But yeah, if I'm at 7 there, okay, he's casting an uh, Everflowing Chalice off the top of my deck. Look how much extra mana he has. There's no reason not to attack with that guy. The Crypt does not hit me. So, looking at the hand here, I have... Basically, this is going to be the Cyclonic Rift turn. It's kind of nice, too, because he's put several of my cards into play. All three of these were cards that he played from, a, from my deck. So we're just going to do the minimum development here to, uh, to use Rift. At the end of the turn, he casts this second sight card. Weird double spy network kind of thing. <laughs> I could care less about it. I had to step away there for a second due to my, uh, my kid needing attention. But anyway, so he re reorders a bunch of cards, I guess, for his Daxos. Ancestral Vision is now ticked down to one. So here comes Daxos. And now we're doing this with some counter backup, which is really nice. 
And again, no colonnade came in again. I can't believe he didn't do it a second time. So that's, I would be at seven, and this thing would almost represent lethal damage. Certainly with one hit of the crypt, it would. So he casts four shadow, and I assume that he knows what's on top of my deck, and I decide that uh, that at least is worth remanding. Given that um, I'm, I'm kind of, like, I really don't want him to, I really don't want him to mill whatever he put on top of my deck because I figure it's something really important, maybe like Tezzeret or something. And uh, I'm hoping that I can draw the card that he's going to mill. <laughs> that was not me sneezing. <laughs> um, I can draw the card that he was going to mill, and maybe he won't even remember what he put on second. So it was Grim Monolith. So he casts it again, but he remembers Polluted Delta. So he gets to draw a card off that. But Badoom. There goes the Cyclonic Rift. One problem kind of solved because we've got Glenelendra to stop the, uh, the sword on the way back down. That was hugely important. I'm still at 11. So he casts Compulsive Research, which I don't care about. There's Daxos. Crypt. Do not hurt me, please. Lose. Down to 8. Mox Opal. Very nice draw right now. Soaring. It's my own Soaring, of course. That I got back from him. And cast Oracle. What did I see there? I'm not sure. Well, it doesn't matter. It's a Chrome Mox there, and I'm just going to ditch the Patron Wizard because I need more mana. I don't see any use for him given my opponent has something like uh, 14 or 15 mana in play. Monolith. All right, we're just ramping back up to put a zombie into play. And because the Condescend just has no value here at all, right now my biggest concern is the fact that I'm staring at Mana Crypt on my side of the board with no way to get rid of it, and my opponent with Colonnade in play, killing me in two attacks. So I'm fully expecting to have to chump block with Glenelandra Archmage next turn, which means that as much as I want to keep my mana untapped to, um, I don't know, to condescend something, I have to uh, steal his guy just to have a blocker. I'm mean, fully expecting just to chump block the colonnade next turn or the turn afterward with this sower, but at least I get to draw cards off of it and draw at my uh, diminishing number of outs. But everything is really about this sword, right? He's still got the Sword of Fire and Ice in his hand, so as much as I hate to uh, let Ancestral Visions resolve, I have to do it. He's up to eight cards in hand again. But yeah, I mean, if he had if he had sent two attacks of Colonnade at me, I would have been dead. So, anyway, he casts Grasp of Phantoms on the Sower, which gets his guy back, which I do not care about because it doesn't have haste. And he plays Jitte. I'm strongly tempted to counter that, but I really can't because he still has... Well, does he have enough mana? One, two, three, four, five. No, he doesn't have enough mana to... Oh, he does. There's two mana in his pool. Yeah. Tooth, that's a sword. Activate. No, I guess he's one short still. But, uh. Yeah, Jitte is dangerous, but it's no sword of fire and ice. Not even close, because I can still block things that have Jitte counters on them. So it's not every day when you've got a Glenelyn Archmage and you let a Umazawa's Jitte resolve, but that's what I gotta do. So he equips, and smashes me down to four. I'm at four life with Mana Crypt in play. <laughs> Facing a land and Jitte, but he doesn't he didn't cast the sword and he still got it in his hand. Come on, win the flip. Bam. Down to one. One life. I can't even use fetch lands. There's a lotus. That's pretty nice. So at this point, keep in mind my Karn is gone, so I don't have that as an out. My shackles are gone, I don't have that as an out. I have Into the Royal and Cryptic Command, as well as Merchant Scroll and Muddle the Mixture remaining as ways to stop this. And of course, there's also uh, Wasteland and um, Wasteland remaining. Nope, they're gone too. And I don't think this deck has Crucible in it. That's probably, yeah. The reason I'm not running Crucible is because I have so few fetch lands, I only have four. So here we go. Last ditch effort at drawing. Come on, something's got to show up. Got so few outs now. Boom. 
winter orb arrives. And look at my opponent's board. Holy cow. All right, Lotus, Magus, is it? Negate on top, which is always handy. I'm going to re-steal his Daxos. And the orb comes down. Backed up by Mana Drain, Condescend, and this guy. Now, I still haven't solved everything, because he's still got Jitte. And enough mana off these colorless artifacts to attack. But it limits his options severely, which is great. All right, so end of turn, he blows this guy up, which makes sense, I guess, if he wants to attack with it. I'll draw a card. And off the top, there's Vendalian Click. Could not be more perfectly timed. Because he has no more counters on this thing. Activate. Jitte. Attack. Blessed Click. I click myself, given that... Um, I don't really care what's in his hand, given that he's not going to be casting anything in the near future. So I just get rid of that uh, the chalice. Double block. Draw two. I see Chronologist in top. Look at this. Oh my god, this situation almost completely solved now. There's just the Jitte and the Daxos now. Oh yeah, and my Mana Crypt, of course. So here we go. At one, Mana Crypt in play. Come on, baby. Win the flip. Yes. And there's Merchant Scroll. Final piece of the puzzle solved. And I have Jitte too, of course. So I'm Mystical Tutor. And actually, I hold down Control when I Mystical Tutored, and sure enough, Into the Royal showed up on top of my deck. So I'm going to do that right now to bounce his Jitte. Understandably, he goes to kill a zombie. I can draw some cards. I have two mana floating. Cast Jace and bounce Daxos. Quip, attack. Crypt solved. Throw away a bunch of junk. I just negate his Jitte. And I gain life. And I Crypt to command my own orb. And at the end of his turn... Um, and he's got, yeah, it's bugging here. He did not cast Hinder. He cast something to actually target the orb to destroy it. I don't remember what it was, but it cost three. It might have been, um, I don't know, what does Disempower cost? No, he already cast that. He cast something that cost three on the orb. It might have been Dismantling Blow. But whatever the case was, I have Condescend. And I Condescend for one, and knowing that he's fully tapped out now, facing Jitte, Jace, and all these guys, he scoops it up. To give me the victory in an absolutely awesome, improbable game where I had to survive a crypt flip at one life and uh, was able to face down Colonnade and Jitte and Sword of Fire and Ice and Daxos and everything with a huge mana deficit also. Just a totally awesome game. Glad it came through except for the last turn. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.